Hello Bloomington, I'm Mayor Tim Bussey and this is the Council Minute for the week of February 5th. No Council meeting this week, but there are a couple of items I wanted to catch up on. The first is an item from our January 29th Council meeting that has generated a lot of discussion. Speed limits on our city streets. You've heard me say before that speeding on city streets and in neighborhoods is the most common concern I hear from Bloomington residents. I knocked on a lot of doors last summer and fall talked to a lot of people from all over the city, and I heard about speeders every single day I was out. And this is not a new concern. I brought up the need to slow drivers down in January of 2020 during my first council meeting as mayor. Staff shared this graphic at our meeting. Now, it stands to reason that the risk to pedestrians increases as driver speed increases. But this graphic shows that increasing speeds by five miles per hour doesn't increase the risk to pedestrians incrementally, the risk increases exponentially. Driving too fast is a public safety issue. It's a quality of life issue, and it's a common courtesy issue. We need to slow people down. Prior to 2019, the state of Minnesota had sole authority for establishing speed limits on all roads in Minnesota, including local city streets. But in August 2019, the law was changed and gave Minnesota cities the authority to set speed limits on their streets. So in September of 2023, the Bloomington City Council approved a 25 mile per hour speed limit for local streets in Bloomington. All of the streets in blue on this map have a speed limit of 25 miles per hour. But we have larger streets in Bloomington, streets where that lower speed limit doesn't make a lot of sense. As part of the discussion in September, the council asked staff to look at the speed limits on larger roadways as well. Staff did the work and last Monday presented a draft set of speed limits ranging from 25 to 35 miles per hour for the larger roadway system in the city. Well, what does that mean? Obviously, speeds on the highways and the interstates can't be changed, although many times the speed on 494 doesn't top 25 miles per hour. We also have a number of county roads that are larger and carry a greater load of traffic, but the city isn't allowed to change the speed limits on county roads either. A good portion of streets like Normandale Boulevard, France and Penn Avenue, Old Shakopee Road, and Nicollet and Portland Avenues, they are all Hennepin County roads, and those speed limits will remain as posted, except in the areas where they become city streets. That's where the public education component of this effort will come into play. Beyond those exceptions, staff took a look at other large streets, typically referred to as collector streets, and offered some thoughtful suggestions about where it would make sense to set the speed limits at 30 or even 35 miles per hour. Some examples of collector streets that may stay at 35 miles per hour include 98th Street and portions of American Boulevard. Those that would stay at 30 miles per hour would include Lindale, Nesbitt, 86th, 90th, and others. The next steps on all of this are for staff to work on code revisions and do the necessary legal work and to continue to gather public input. There's a very good discussion underway on this issue at Let's Talk Bloomington I'd encourage you to check it out and chime in with your thoughts. Ultimately, we know that just changing the speed limits won't change driver behavior. We also know that simply writing more tickets isn't the answer either. It's going to take a combination of increased enforcement, changing the environment, the speed limits where possible, and educating people about these speed reduction efforts. Hopefully then, we'll see drivers slow down. On Monday, it was announced that Minneapolis will host the 2029 Rotary International Convention. The event is expected to draw more than 15,000 people from about 120 countries across the globe. If you're not familiar with Rotary, the best way to describe Rotarians is good people doing really good things. This is a great group and it's a major event. And I want to congratulate Minneapolis and Mayor Fry. I also want to congratulate our city manager, Jamie Verbrugge. Jamie's a proud Rotarian. He also served as the co-chair of the bid committee. Well done. While the event itself will take place at the Minneapolis Convention Center, we know full well that Bloomington's hospitality and tourism industries will see significant benefits from this convention. The event is expected to inject more than $30 million into the Twin Cities economy, and we know a good chunk of that money will be spent in Bloomington hotels, the Mall of America, and Bloomington bars and restaurants. That's good for Bloomington businesses, and it's good for the Bloomington tax base. Big events like this don't just happen. It takes some real effort and a region-wide commitment to getting the work done. Our team at the Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau worked closely with Meet Minneapolis, Visit St. Paul, and the Governor's Office to help secure this bid. 
that collaboration is invaluable. And it shows very clearly how strong this region is when cities work together. It's also a good indication that the groundwork we laid while working on the Expo bid is the foundation for this type of effort. At the press conference announcing the Rotary International event, Governor Walls said to me, the template you guys established with the Expo bid led to this. Bloomington is a partner in another example of this collaborative effort through a group called Minnesota Sports and Events. Minnesota Sports and Events is a partnership between Bloomington, Minneapolis, and St. Paul with the goal of attracting, promoting, and executing big world-class events. Events like the Big Ten men's and women's basketball tournaments, they're coming up in just a couple of weeks. The USA Gymnastics Olympic team trials coming up in June. The NCAA Frozen Four in 2024, and the Women's Hockey Frozen Four in 2025. And the Special Olympic Games and the World Junior Hockey Tournament in 2026. The Twin Cities will host all of those events and likely more in the coming years because of the work of Minnesota Sports and Events. And I will say there are a couple of additional events that I'm not allowed to announce yet, but I can tell you they are big. As I mentioned earlier, all of these events will have a significant economic impact. The gymnastics team trials are expected to generate a $50 million local economic impact, and the World Junior Hockey Tournament, about $45 million. People who come to these events fly into our airports, they sleep in our hotels, eat at our restaurants, and shop at our retail stores, all of which leads to millions of dollars in new economic impact for the hospitality and tourism industries, which in turn supports jobs. And Minnesota and Bloomington shine on the big stage. Hosting world-class events showcases the region and our city as a safe, vibrant community and a great place to live, work, and play. Finally, earlier this week, the City of Bloomington conducted interviews for our boards and commission appointments for 2024. The city received 47 applications from residents hoping to serve the city on the Advisory Board of Health and the Creative Placemaking, Human Rights, Sustainability, and Parks, Arts, and Recreation Commissions. Each interview panel included one current commission member and one member of the City Council. There were four dozen interviews in five different rooms over the course of about four hours. One person described it as municipal speed dating. Following the interviews, the panels reflected on the applicant pool, focusing on identifying applicants with the most valuable skills and experiences to make an impact on the commission they were applying for. The panels developed recommendations that the City Council will consider on Monday night. We had 47 applicants, but only 14 openings, which I guess is a good problem to have, but I know that it means some people are going to be disappointed. I want to thank everyone who stepped forward and applied. It's great to see so many residents willing to serve the city, and I was so impressed with the applicant pool. Whether it's on a board or commission, or with one of our local nonprofits, or your faith community, or in your kid's school, there are so many ways to serve. Please continue to seek out opportunities for service. There's always work to do, and I appreciate the number of people willing to work to make this an enduring and remarkable community where people want to be. That will do it for this week's Council Minute. Thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, stay safe, Bloomington.